Before we get into the main video, make sure to smash the like and subscribe button, because otherwise these spiders are going to jump right out of the screen. You have 5 seconds to do so. The program separates itself by excluding any personal drama. It's arguably one of the most courteous challenges you'll ever see on television. Everything revolves around the blade's art. When competitors are confronted with especially tough tasks, we often witness them assisting one another. Bladesmithing is regaining prominence as a result of the show's success. Many people now recognize the importance of making knives from scratch, despite the fact that it was formerly thought to be a dying art. So, for today's video, let's now disclose the 8 untold revelations about the show Forged in Fire. The judges perform the challenges before the competitors. This one makes a lot of sense. Every episode of the program delivers something unforeseen to the participants. They are sometimes given a pile of scrap metal and told to build a knife out of it. They'll have to go without power at other times. Someone must ensure that the difficulties are manageable. There would be no episode to watch otherwise. The first two tasks are handled by Nielsen the resident knife specialist. These usually need making a blade out of something unattainable in a short amount of time. The remaining three competitors must then improve their weaponry once someone is eliminated. The blades are then tested on bones or anything similar. The final task requires the competitors to return home and create a historically accurate weapon. This challenge is carried out by David Baker, a weapons historian. Left Field Pictures is suing Fox. Outpost Entertainment is the company behind Forged in Fire. Left Field Pictures has a subsidiary called Outpost Entertainment. Are you still with us? Fantastic! The two came to an accord in 2014. For Fox Business Network, Left Field would create the first ever reality show. FBN backed out of the agreement a few months later. Left Field had already started generating episodes at the time. Left Field is now seeking $4.5 million in damages. There isn't much information regarding the show's content. The litigation is publicly accessible online in a highly copy-protected form. Fox's decision to back out of the agreement was unusual. Left Field Pictures has a track record of producing award-winning programs. The project's public details are few. Strange Inheritance, FBN's first reality program, premiered recently. Most of the contestants make cutlery for a living. Another reason the program might have been about cutlery is because several of the competitors are cutlery specialists. It may come as a surprise, but crafting war axes is not a constant source of income. These individuals must eat in addition to the potential $10,000 reward. Forging excellent dining utensils might bring you a steady stream of customers. This is how many of the show's previous competitors make their bread and butter. Murray Carter is one such individual. Carter Cutlery is his business. He's one of several past competitors who have made a YouTube video about their time on the program. Another example is JD Smith. Swords and cutlery are offered on his website, but there aren't many people out there purchasing medieval weapons. Will caters to kids. This program is seen by youngsters, as previously stated. The makers are well aware of this reality. Another instance of the cast pulling them in. A traditional weapon is always used in the final challenge. The final two contestants are eliminated. They have five days to forge it once they arrive. After that, they'll bring it back and put it through rigorous testing. Will Willis, the host, unveils the weapon from under a crimson cloth in a spectacular revelation. He then goes on to provide a short history of the place. He typically concludes by demonstrating a contemporary application of the weapon. Most antique weapons, of course, are only significant in fiction. As a result, Will utilizes X-Men or Lord of the Rings to contextualize the weaponry. This is a move targeted squarely at the younger viewers of the program. It was initially going to be about cutlery. We've now gone through the show's origins in great detail. We know it was inspired by the passion for cookery programs of a 14-year-old girl. 
we know that it was virtually all about firearms in its early days. Another intriguing detail is that it might have been about cutlery as well. This isn't as bizarre as it may seem. Forging eating utensils follows a technique that is almost similar to that of forging weapons. On the battlefield, a blade that isn't sharp will not kill. A steak knife, on the other hand, that isn't sharp won't cut steak. Of course, this would have severely hampered the show's capacity to devise innovative challenges. Healy also believed that cooking and cutlery were inappropriate for the History Channel's target audience. It's against the law for contestants to keep their weapons. It's one of the show's most memorable scenes. One bladesmith is sent home after each round. Will's parting remarks are widely known to show fans. Surrender your weapon. Each loser approaches the judge's table, places their blade on the table and exits the room. What the fans aren't aware of is that isn't all for show. Even the winners had to hand in their pieces before leaving. This isn't even due to the actions of nefarious network executives. The actual explanation is that the program wouldn't be able to continue if it wasn't for the legislation. Outside of the studio, knives the size of the ones produced on the program would be prohibited. As a result, they must be treated as props. The prize money for the winners is $10,000. The losers are left with just the recollection of their brief time in the limelight. Nielsen was brought on as the mean judge. One man's career was cemented beyond all others thanks to American Idol. No, Adam Lambert isn't one of them. Clay Aiken, for one, is not one of them. We're talking about Simon Cowell. No reality panel of judges has been completed without the resident tough guy, since the bitter Brit first hit our TV screens. Nielsen plays this character on Forged in Fire. Nielsen is the judge that knows most about forging out of the whole panel. They didn't recruit me for my comedic timing, he admits. Nielsen seldom flashes his dazzling whites, in contrast to Marcada's constant smile. He often makes snide comments about the competitors' tactics throughout the tasks. Although he has yet to make anybody weep, the program is just in its fourth season. Marcada wrongly pronounces the word kill for a reason. Above all, Forged in Fire is a family program. At least, that's Doug Marcada's opinion. His catchphrase, it will kill, may be familiar to you. When he's disemboweling test dummies, he says this. But listen carefully, since it isn't exactly what he says. Not any longer, at least. It will keel, he says, rather than it will keel. Marcada came up with this term, which means keep everyone alive. Marcada is very aware that there are children present. He wants kids to understand that the deadly weapons they're being sold saves lives. However, he never expresses any of this in the program. So, it's just a bunch of tiny parrots going around and yelling, it will kill. That concludes our video, so which among the revelations have you heard before? What season of the show Forged in Fire is your favorite? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications on our future content. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.